Good day, everybody, and welcome to Autotronics with Key Clinic. My name is Jerome Martin, and I will be presenting a lesson about checksums and why they are important. This lesson is dedicated to one of our students all the way from Bulgaria. He did not understand why or what checksums are, and I will attempt to make it a bit easier for you guys to understand what checksums are and why they are so important. In our picture here, we have a Gol 5 GTI with a MED 9.5 ECU. The reason why I put this combo here is because in these vehicles, we find that many new technicians, when they do ECU replacements, they will just swap EPROMs and then the car won't start and then a whole can of worms is opened. Sometimes they would buy files online. Somebody would sell them an EPROM file with the emo off. They would put that emo off file onto this ECU and they would still sit with a non-runner. This happens very, very, very often. We do have a lesson on how to decode these ECUs, but for now, we will just be discussing a checksum. A short note is that in this ECU, we have a checksum in the flash and in the EEPROM. That is why you cannot just exchange this ECU. Okay, what are the tools that we would require? To follow along with this lesson, you will need a hex editor as well as a scientific calculator. What knowledge do you require? You need to understand how the hexadecimal number system works. And you also need to know how to use a hex editor and a calculator. And that is a scientific calculator. We do, in our beginner's lessons, we do have a link to the Khan Academy where you can go and read all about hexadecimal number systems as well as binary number systems. Okay, now firstly, what is a checksum? Well, a checksum, let's say, let's say for example, you are going to go and show a client a box containing 10 keys. So before you go to your client, you will count the 10 keys, you will take a note, write 10 on your note, stick it in your box, and then you go to your client, and when you get to the client, you will then do a recount and compare your notes. If there's 10 keys in your box, and you have 10 on your notes, then your checksum is correct. Uh, say for example now when you leave your client and you do another checksum check and you find that there is only nine keys and your checksum says it should be 10 then your checksum is wrong somebody could have taken one key or you could have dropped a key now let's say you go to the next client and you sell one key you would then modify your notes and minus the one key and make it nine so then you have just performed a checksum correction and your checksums will all be in order. A checksum works in a similar way for automotive computers. Remember a engine control unit specifically stores a recipe or a set of instructions for it to run a engine safely and efficiently. And if that, re if that recipe changes, it could lead to a no start, or worse, it could lead to damage to the engine. Well, picture this. Let's say, for example, the flash memory becomes corrupt in the area where the fuel mixture is stored. This could lead to leaning out of the mixture, and that could lead to serious engine damage. That is why we have checksums in automotive computers. These checksums sometimes on certain ECUs, they will check the memory and see if everything is in order on startup. Some vehicles will constantly check them like driving during the driving process. It will check the checksums. We've had a instance where 
a Mercedes Benz W205 after a DPF delete the checksum will always fail and sometimes it will the checksum will be fine during startup but while driving the ECU will perform another checksum and if the checksum is incorrect the ECU will go into limp mode the other reason why you need to know what checksums are we have we are seeing many ECUs especially EDC 16 ECUs come in with a checksum failure and because many mechanics do not understand what checksums are they often just replace the ECUs okay let's get started so in your exercise folder I want you guys to go and open up the there is a file there for the file is named checksum if you can open up that file that file comes from a micro wire or for the guys who have bought uh, one of our kits with the EEPROMs, you could load a file onto your EEPROM, read it, and then save the file. After you save the file, you're going to open it up with your hex editor. And after you have opened it up with your hex editor, we will look at the content of the file. And I'll show you, I've created a short video where we are performing a checks we are creating our own checksum so basically what how our checksum will work our checksum we will add all these hexadecimal figures together and after we have added all these figures on all the lines wherever we have any data we are going to add everything together and once we have added everything together, we are going to reserve an area in this EEPROM memory. So we're going to reserve this area here. So this area will contain our checksum. So we will enter our checksum into that area. So you can use your, you can use your scientific calculator that is bundled with Windows to do the it addition and after you have added up everything you that would be your checksum thereafter we have another short exercise whereby we have a, another file where we have changed the I've made a small change there small it looks like an insignificant change if you look at it quickly you won't notice it but I want you to check that file, go through it, calculate everything and see if the checksum matches. Okay, I'm going to move ahead to the next slide. Now, what we have just done there is we have created an algorithm for a checksum. What is a algorithm? So, let's think of an algorithm as a recipe you follow to make something like a sandwich or a cake here's how we can understand it an algorithm is a set of step by step instructions to solve a problem or complete a task it's like a recipe that tells you exactly what to do one step at a time example making a peanut butter and jam or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for us US guys, for our, sorry, for our US guys. Now in South Africa, we don't call jam jelly, we call it jam. Get the ingredients, that will be, so your ingredients will be bread, peanut butter, and the jam. Spread, step two, spread the peanut butter, take one slice of bread, and spread the peanut butter on it. Step three, take another slice of bread and spread the jam on it or the jelly. Put together the two slices of bread, put the two slices of bread together with the peanut butter and jam sides facing each other and enjoy your sandwich, it's ready to eat. That basically is an algorithm how to make a peanut butter and a jelly or jam sandwich. Just like a recipe helps you to make a sandwich, an algorithm helps computers and people solve problems by following a clear set of steps. 
If you follow the steps correctly, you'll get the right result every time. I hope that makes sense. I hope this makes sense. So in our example there, we added everything up to create our checksum. Look, that is a basic checksum. There are, there are there's a lot of checksums out there, but we don't want you guys to be like a, a computer science major. We just want you to understand or get an understanding of how a checksum works. Sometimes you would be required to be to do a manual checksum correction, especially if you're doing, if you like really want to dive into this and you want to do a manual editing of a file. But we also have many tools, like many of our programmers will perform the checksum correction for us automatically. So not don't really get to into the method of how to perform a checksum correction. Just understand, this is just for you to understand what a checksum is. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to download the other files in our folder. And then I want, to, I want you to verify and see if those checksums are correct. Now, sometimes in certain ECUs, we have a checksum in both the EEPROM and the flash. So that they basically like links the two together. We find this in Toyota G immobilizers where there's a checksum in the EEPROM that's linked to the flash. So you cannot just swap a EEPROM in those emo boxes you will have a non-start. We also have checksums in, in like, as I explained before, in that MED9 ECUs. Just an example of how checksums work in both, in both a ECU, sorry, in both a EEPROM and a flash. So let's say, for example, here we have a EEPROM over here and we have a flash over here. And this is the content of the EEPROM and the content of the flash. So what I want you to do is I want you to add up everything here. We will add both. We'll add up everything here, add up everything here, and then check to see if the checksum is correct over here. That will be your exercise for this lesson. And that will be all for today. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed it. And with all our classes, we value input from our students. That just enables us to make the courseware a bit better and easier for you to understand. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Drop us a message in one of our groups or on our school page and let us know after each lesson, what do you think? And if we can improve it, we'll step towards it and, and improve and look at ways to make it simpler and easier for you to understand. Thank you for supporting us.